I am Pauline Canton. Um, does anybody know where St. Joseph is on Highway 21 between Grand Bend and Bayfield? Yes. And on the crossroads there at St. Joseph, there's a tall marble statue of St. Joseph on that corner. And at St. Peter's Church on the right-hand side on the way to Bayfield, there's a very tall uh, statue of St. Joseph. And Brother Andre is kneeling at his feet praying. So it's very interesting. If you're driving by, it happens to catch your eye, that's what that is. Now the statue on Highway 21 um, in front of the church was put together with, from donations from the parish in 1955. And then the story begins, though, at St. Joseph at the Crossroads. So my husband's great-grandfather, Narcisse Canton, was born in St. Joseph on Lake Huron. He was a businessman and did many dealings in Montreal. And when he was there, the popularity was Brother Andre. And Brother Andre was healing, and Brother Andre was building this giant, this, this chapel on the hill. And so they had a very much in common. He went to see Brother Andre, and Brother Andre said, look at this, I'm building a church for St. Joseph, I'm building a chapel for St. Joseph. And Narcissus said, that's nothing, I'm building a city. I'm building a city for St. Joseph, and it's going to be huge, and it's going to be grand, and you have to come check it out. So he invited Brother Andre, and Brother Andre finally came in 1917. That one can go around. And he also came in 1922. So you've got pictures of the family with Brother Andre in 1917 and 1922. And he stayed with my husband's grandfather then, Napoleon, because Narcisse had to stay back in Montreal. He was still doing business. But he goes going around. Now, Napoleon did an account of where he stayed, which room he stayed in, what he ate, very detailed account, very proud memories and very proud moments for Napoleon and the whole family. And when Brother Andre was at St. Joseph, he went to church at St. Peter's every day and they have their, uh, he always sat in the fourth pew on the right hand side from the front, always sat in the same one, he insisted on walking to church, and it's a good kilometer I would say. It's a good kilometer. He would walk every day. And you know, he was older and he was frail. He wasn't well, but he insisted on walking. So that was, and while he was at St. Joseph, um, he went, he would go and he would visit the sick and he would talk to the sick about St. Joseph and he'd bring St. Joseph so ill. He'd rub medals and many were cured. And also, um, he, the family invited guests to come meet Brother Andre at the house. And Brother Andre healed many people at the house as well. And all of those uh, miracles and healings and cures and stuff are located, recorded in the church's records, the church archive records, history, something, something. <coughs> so when he was also visiting, um, he said, come on for a walk with me. And he took Napoleon for a walk to that public, where that public park is there right now. And it was just farmland. And he, they, he took a pipe and a little sledgehammer out of the barn and he hammered that pipe into the ground there and he said, someday something special will happen for St. Joseph here. And Napoleon's like, what, 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 what? And he says, it's not something special. So um, it, did, it took till 1976 when finally a statue was donated from St. Peter's Seminary here in London and they were able to put a statue on that spot. Now, of that visit of Brother Andre, they saved the sledgehammer and they saved the metal pipe. Now, Napoleon lent out the metal pipe to a friend and he never got it back. So that was very sad. But, uh, so everybody familiar with Brother Andre from Montreal? Brother Andre has just been canonized as Canada's second saint, first male Canadian born saint. The first one, of course, being St. Margaret de Ville. Um, in the, so while he was in, while well, Narcissus was in Montreal, he also had his son with him, Joseph. So, Joe would take, Mon take Brother Andre for rides around Montreal and he would go in the evenings and they would go visit the sick around Montreal and Joe was his bestest buddy. And that one night, it's, it's very special, one night um, Joe's uncle, Mark's uncle Joe, had picked up this huge tall statue of St. Joseph, really tall, and um, he carried it up and, and they placed it on the altar at the little chapel of St. Joseph's Oratory there in Montreal. So it was very special. So that was very special and that's blessed and that's with our family as well. We've got all sorts of little precious things from Brother Andre. Um, one night, um, Uncle Joe brought Brother Andre back to his little room above the chapel there and Brother Andre went to his knees and he started his way across. He said, 
Brother, I'm it's late. You really should get to bed. You've been up all day. You've been working all day. You've seen people all night. It's late. You're not going to get any sleep. And he said, it's when we do things when we are tired that we gain the most merit. So that is very special to the family as well. When he was on his deathbed, Mark's grandfather, Napoleon, went to visit Montreal to go visit Brother Andre. And Brother Andre was weaving another sash for his cordon, another cordon for his gown. And um, so Napoleon said, what do you do? And you know, and he said, you're right. He said, I'll never finish this. And he gave Napoleon the string and he gave him the crucifix that was attached to it. So that indeed is very special to the family as well. And that's been in the family as well for almost 100 years now because he passed away in 1937. So he went to visit him in December 36. He passed away in December 1937, January 1937. Mark's uncle Joe, being very close to Brother Andre, was asked to guard the body overnight. So that was very special. And uh, before they sealed the coffin, they gathered all of his very close friends around and they wrote a farewell letter. Thank you for everything. Thank you for being such a great friend. Thank you for all the cures. Thank you for... And here it is signed, and here we have it signed by Narcisse and Joseph and John Woodcock, his other, turns out to be Mark's great uncle as well, that's not true. And that's Narcisse and John and Joseph Canton were all signed a farewell letter. So that's very special. Um, so the next day, Mark's uncle Joe was um, part of guarding also the, the ceremony, um, the visitation where people, they would just rushed millions of people through. And people would um, purchase rosaries at the oratory, and they would drag the rosaries across Brother Andre in the way by. They were just kind of shushed by because there were so many people. And they say, so many rosaries were dragged across Brother Andre, it wore the toes off his socks. Oh, so that was fair. <laughs> yeah. So, so that, we've been, we've held very many close memories to to um, Brother Andre and even up to the funeral. Here's a funeral pass. And the funeral pass, one of these funeral passes say, um, uh, Joseph has permission to tip, tip uh, Brother Andre's head back because it had so many people had walked by. He could just tip his head back. So that's, it's written in French on the back. But that's very kind of cool. That's kind of cool as well. So news of the canonization came as a wonderful, wonderful opportunity for the whole family. And Mark and I took our four teenagers to France and Rome. 